Hi traders, Joseph here from ACAP. Welcome to Friday's report for the 6th of November. Uh, tonight we have um, non-farm payrolls data, unemployment data and uh, average earnings coming out for US employment data and Canadian employment data. It's coming out at 12.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Time. Now, um, just touching on overnight, uh, the FOMC and Bank of England met uh, rates stayed on hold. Uh, the pound did see a bit of a move higher, but overall, all the risk markets really jumped last night. We'll get into some of that shortly. And we did hear some comments from Powell saying that uh, thing, he expects things to moderate as more people return to work. So uh, we'll see how that uh, continues. Now, on to tonight's data. They're yeah, looking for US employment data, looking for average hour average hourly earnings to come in at 0.2%, non-farm employment change to come in at 600k and employment rate to uh, drop to 7.6%. On the Canadian employment data side, they're looking for the employment change to come in at 100k and unemployment to uh, stay the same at 9%. So it could, it's a, a a capping off to a very, what's been a very busy week. Uh, we still don't have a clear winner in the US election just yet that uh, continues to uh, develop and uh, there is, you know, Trump is uh, looking to challenge some of the, uh, counting some of, of the states. So we'll now move on to uh, some of the market action and we can just start with the NASDAQ here. Stocks have been a bit lower today, but we can just see that extension higher that we saw overnight now. That's the resistance we're watching at the moment. It's from uh, 12, uh, 135. So that's the next step for buyers to break. And um, we'll see what happens with this selling and if there's any influence from the non farm payrolls tonight or from uh, any, you know, big developments in the election. Uh, stocks have looked pretty strong with Biden in front. So tech stocks, that is mainly. So if we did see Biden. Uh, officially take it could that be a further drive for tech stocks and um, you know again uh, if we do have more positive data for on the US employment front is that going to be a you know a driver as well to keep momentum going that we've been seeing so far this week um, over quickly the currencies um, we've had like with stocks we've had a little bit of a pause today after some really strong buying uh, the Aussie broke above uh, this high uh, the euro was didn't tested that high but didn't really wasn't able to get above it so that's resistance for now it's at 1860 and um, we'll be seeing how buyers go with that level if they are able to test it again now the pound after the bank of england had an exceptional rally uh, we saw a move um, of 1.25 percent sitting at this high here this resistance point so again like with a few markets we're just looking to see if um, buyers can take the next step and break above that now <clears throat> Dollar cat has been interesting today after some very heavy selling last night. Uh, we've seen buyers start to show some demand and some support from uh, this late August, early September support point, and that's around the uh, 30, 30 point to 30, 40. So we're we looking to see if that support can hold and uh, start to develop into something. But at the moment, uh, momentum's heavily skewed in uh, favor of risk markets. So we'll just see if this rally is able to hold out or not and it's also being supported by uh, some moves lowers in oil uh, so we saw a very small move lower overnight and we've seen further selling so far today now some of the really big moves apart from the nasdaq and um, some stock indices have been on gold and um, bitcoin so we'll start with gold so gold had a surge yesterday uh, and we saw 2.43 percent added uh, it broke above that high that Sorry, I'll just readjust that. So we saw a real clean break above that range of, uh, you know, around that uh, 1930 area. But the next real test for gold will be up around, um, you know, 1958 to 1960, where there's plenty of uh, resistance. And then again, up at um, 1970. Now, just jumping over to Bitcoin. Bitcoin had a phenomenal day yesterday. It's just really unbelievable uh, as what Bitcoin does. Uh, we saw you know, close to 9% added and um, we've seen further buying today. So in the last two days alone to this point, we've seen 12% added to price, which is just quite remarkable, isn't it? And um, price is back above um, 15,500. It's currently trading at 15,669. So with that, you know, at this position, 
there's no real buy or sell it's just really now just waiting for price to uh, give us some indication of uh, a new idea but yeah the momentum is very strong at the moment to the buy side and um, we'll just have a quick look at the weekly and we can see now that you know it's really well above uh, the previous high there and um, the next real true high for to be tested now is up at 17,000 sorry so we will just see um, if it can maintain this momentum this is not uncommon for Bitcoin it can go parabolic and it does like to stay parabolic so we can see here uh, you probably may have thought that that could have been a bit of a top here but no it just keeps on going and it's the same story back in a lot of its rallies so you can never really discount this market and say you know it's gonna it has to have reached a high it's just it can't maintain this kind of momentum um, we did see a very strong shift in momentum um, a while you know a few years ago but it does have that ability just to keep running so yeah definitely never try to pick a top in Bitcoin that's uh, mainly what I'm trying to say so um, that's um, really it uh, for today's uh, report um, we'll try to keep this um, a little bit uh, a little bit tighter than some of this week's reports so we do thank you for watching and listening uh, keep an eye on tonight's um, non-farm payroll data and for the rest of the day we wish you good trading and have a great weekend and until next week bye for now thanks